Hi everyone, welcome to today's Monday message. My name is Beth and it's my joy to be able to bring to you today's message titled The Promise of Peace. And the promise of peace that we're going to be um, sharing about today comes from the book of Philippians, one of my favourite books. And um, I've been personally journeying through this and we're going to be just thinking about one verse and that is verse seven. So I'm just going to read to you this. So it's Philippians 4 verse 7 and it's taken from um, I'm reading from the New International Version and it says this and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. For so little words this verse just has such power and re really resonates and really speaks volumes and measures to um, the God that we serve and the God that can do all things through us and um, some passages say and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding um, or um, transcends but really we have a God that does all of these things and when I was thinking about um, this chat this verse and chapter and I was thinking about um, the peace of God I was thinking about how the Bible presents to us peace and I really there's like three aspects that I think um, of peace that relate to the God that we serve so the first aspect is peace from God and Paul continually used um, this as an introduction to his letters and I think it really serves as a reminder to us that peace comes to us as a gift from God. It's not something that we can find in our relationships, it's not something we can find in financial stability or in a nice home or material things. Peace that is healing, peace that can transform our lives, peace that um is infectious peace is some peace that um we really need is only something that comes as a gift from god and i think sometimes we forget to um seek that from god we forget to ask for those things in times of suffering and turmoil in times of um sadness in confusion we need to seek those and peace that comes as a gift from god can be received to us should we ask of it from him and that then moves on to the next next aspect of peace that we find in scripture and that is peace with God and when I think about this I think about through all of scripture how we can see that described as a relationship um describes the relationship sorry that we enter into with God through the finished work of Jesus Christ that moment on the cross and the moments afterwards when he was resurrected we find a pure peace that we can have with God we have something that God can feel with us during the moments when we need that. We have a peace that we feel and God feels that too. And he journeys through with that. And that relationship that we can have with him, I think that brings so much peace to me. Knowing that I have a personal and eternal relationship with a God who can do all these things, can do the things not just mentioned in this verse, but can do the things that are mentioned throughout Philippians, throughout the New Testament, and that we see in the Old Testament too. We have a God that is able to do immeasurably more as we read throughout in other passages of scripture. And um, that is really powerful. And that peace that we hold in that relationship is something that can get us through times um, of difficulty, that can get us, um, can even be a, a, as a reminder to wake up every morning that we have this peace with God, that we can sit with him and dwell with him in a beautiful time and moment. And the final aspect is the peace of God. And for me, I believe that's the peace that's spoken here in verse seven. And um, it says that in the scripture that is beyond all mind and that is beyond all our power and thinking. And I think sometimes we try to measure um, God. We try to measure the things that he gives us and we try and say, oh, but I only felt that in that moment or he only felt that. But the peace that God provides is beyond any power sorry beyond any thinking that we can e we can we can even comprehend and sometimes we have to be reminded of that it surpasses or transcends all our understanding and that's because of things of this earth can't even compete with the measure of the god that we serve the god that i know can provide peace to you when you may feel that that's not afforded to you when you may feel unworthy or undeserved of that peace but it's a peace that the peace of God is a peace that surpasses all understanding and will guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. 
And my prayer this morning for you is that if you need that peace, if you need something, if you need the peace that surpasses understanding to guard your heart and mind, to seek that from God this morning, to spend time and to really just seek out God and say, Father God, I pray for that peace. I need peace from God. I'm asking for that gift with you. I'm asking to sit in that moment and have peace with you, God. And I'm asking for the peace of God that transcends the understanding. I don't want peace of this earth. I don't want peace and settlement that's going to be non-everlasting. I want the eternal promise of peace that only you can give me, Father God, and ask for that in that moment. In my um, Bible, I've got a, a little post-it note that I've written down that with a passage, um, with a quote from um, Spurgeon, and it says this, What is God's peace? According to him, it is the unruffled serenity of the infinitely happy God with the eternal composure of the absolutely well-contended God. And I, to me, I absolutely love that. And it's a, it's a quite a mouthful reading that really. But um, those words, I think, really resonated. Unruffled serenity. Just nothing can irritate us. Nothing can frustrate. God provides a peace to us in that moment for that where all the things that may be attacking us can just be dissolved and removed away. The infinitely happy God with eternal composure of the well content of the well contented God. The composure that is strong and steadfast, a peace that remains firm, the peace that can stand as a guard against the things that may be um, causing turmoil, ca causing distress or just causing us to to just feel off track for that day. And the line that which transcends all understanding, it isn't that it's something that's senseless and therefore impossible to understand, in my opinion. But it's actually just beyond our ability to understand and explain. Therefore, it must be experienced. The peace of God isn't something that we can. We can really, in my eyes, we can try to articulate and I'm trying today but I really think the peace of God is only something that can be experienced. And I can share these with you today, but you can't experience the peace of God through, through my words here today. The peace of God that you, that you need, the peace of God or the peace from God that I'm sharing about, that I've attested to, that I have an experience of, must be experienced by you too. For you to fully have any comprehension of it, you need to be experienced of it and therefore you need to seek it and my encouragement to you as I said before is for you to ask that of God this peace doesn't just surpass the understanding of the worldly man it surpasses all understanding even the godliest man you know can't comprehend this peace and I think that's why we really struggle sometimes to understand it and we struggle to kind of share and share a message with you but what I've written down here today is a hope that you will seek that of God, that you will understand that it's a gift from him, that you can be in those moments with him and God will be there amongst you. And that as it surpasses all understanding, and as sometimes you may think that it's really impossible to grasp and seek, to just spend that time and seek it from God, ask for that peace and ask for you, ask of God to be experienced of that peace. Ask to spend time and dwell in that peace. Because in that moment, I do truly believe that the peace that comes from God will be a guard over your heart. It will keep you strong. It will be firm. It's unshakable. It's not something that can be lost. It's not something that can be um, given away at that moment. It's a peace that comes from God. It's a peace that gives you infinitely more than you need. It's a peace that can be emotive, it's a peace that can be joyful, it can, it can provide rejoicing, it can provide solace, it can provide comfort, it can provide everything you need in that moment that you seek it because we have a God that can provide that and so much more in that moment. And so today as I leave you I just want to encourage you and say that the peace of God is attainable, the peace of God is something that you can experience and my prayer today is that you will experience that and that you spend time asking God to give you peace, to bring that gift into your lives on a daily basis, whether it's for a moment or whether it's something that you continually spend more time to dwell in as we approach this time of Advent and we think about the beginning of Christmas and 
that's a, the idea of peace really um, comes up again. And we'll probably be sharing more about it as we're going to be sharing an Advent series with you. And um, the first one next week is going to be hope. And we really look forward to sharing those with you. But I just want to finish today with an encouragement. And I think sometimes we try and fill our own words with um, with things to share with you. But I'm just going to share this verse again as a reminder to you that the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a blessed day. Bye.